that God has given them. And we don't forget about on next Wednesday, on our fifth Wednesday night, we'll be right back here for movie night. Amen. Just come in fellowship with one another and just have a good time communing together. Amen. So we're going to bring up, amen, the speaker on the hour. Amen. For the ones that know her, for the ones that are online that may not know her, we bring to you the evangelist Gwen Wright. Amen. Of the month of the Lord, God, the first and we just pray that we give her her amen and some hallelujah. Amen. Let God use her in her own special way. Amen. Amen. God be the Lord. God be the Lord. How many know that the blood still works? I just have to thank my God for who he is Amen. and what he has done for me and where he has brought me from to where I am in the, in the house today. Amen. 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 Giving all reverence, obedience to God, Pastor Hall and my colleagues here in the ministry and all my beautiful brothers, sisters in Christ. I'm glad when he said, let us all go into the house of the Lord. Amen. And tonight I'll be coming from the book of Acts. Acts 12. Starting at the 12th verse. And I'll be reading from the King James. When you have, let's just say amen, please. Amen. And the word reads, and when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the gates, a decimo came hearkened Name Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then they said, It's an angel. Verse 16 said, but Peter continued to continue knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he beckoned unto them with the hand to hold their peace. Declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of, of the prison. And he said, go shoot these things unto James and to the brother. And he departed and went into another place. Verse 18 said, Now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers. What has become of Peter? I want to use tonight from my topic out of verse 16 Keep on knocking. You know, there's time I'm sure when people are, have been locked up in prison and and they did had done nothing wrong and they're trying to find out how they're gonna get out this mess that they, they that they don't know how they got in. Mm -hmm. But here in our story to, in our scripture in our lesson tonight, we're talking about Peter. And during this time in this part of book Acts, of uh, Acts 12, Herod was the king. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. And Herod was that type of person that he was bringing persecution to the church and the people of the church. Mm -hmm. And because of a few Jews that didn't like Christians. Yeah. So what he decided to do is have 
Peter captured and brought in, placed in prison. So when once Passover was done and completed with, he was going to put Peter on trial, but, but he was going to do it in public. That's what uh, Herod's plan was at this time that he was going right. to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Peter was put in prison, and just think about it. This is what Peter's first time he was put in prison. This was his third time that Peter was put in prison. All right. All right. And they and the Bible tells me that uh, while Peter was in prison, he was heavily guarded. Mm -hmm. And when I say he was heavily guarded, he had two chains on his hand and sleeping between two guard two guards, and there were guards at the gate. But they failed to realize they didn't have a guard over my heads. Because heaven came down and stepped in and, and set Peter free from out of the prison. They blocked Peter down, but they couldn't keep his guard out. Heaven dispatched an angel to Peter in the prison. They said it was a bright light. It was an angel of the Lord that woke him up. But the, everybody else that was in prison with Peter was knocked out. Yeah. And the angel of the Lord told him to get up, mm -hmm. get ready, and follow me. Yeah. Yeah. And now that bring, that was the first few verses, that, that uh, one through five that was. And now here in our verse it said, so when Peter got out, mm -hmm. verse 12, he said, and in verse 10, 12 tells us, and when he considered, and what this means when it says, when he considered, mm -hmm. he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about all these people that was at Mary's house. All right. mm -hmm. Mary must have had a big house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the reason I say Mary must have had a big house because they were saying, there were many gathered there at the house. I didn't say that the Bible said there was many at Mary's house. And even in verse 5, it tells us what they were doing at Mary's house. They say they were praying to God for Peter. After Peter was set free, he took some time to, ref to reflect on his extraordinary escape that right. was initiated right. by God. All right. All right. Peter took some time because the, the reason why I say it took some time because verse 12, if you look at it, and if I'm not mistaken, it said, and when he considered this, mm -hmm. this word considered, we, we, this word considered is derived from the Greek word synodu. Mm -hmm. And synodu, which means uh, com com to comprehend or to completely understand. In other words, Peter didn't understand while he was in there until he came out of where he was. Often we, often we don't understand why we are in where, in where we're at. Because we have not we have not fully comprehend why we're there anyway. We need to consider deliverance is not official until the one who has been delivered mm -hmm. knows that he's been delivered. Right. Yeah. All right. You can we can have people to tell us all day that we've been delivered. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. But not until we comprehend. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We have to look for a sign. Yeah. Yeah. When you completely understand, then you're no longer in it. And we got to think about the first thing once Peter understood what happened and how did he get out of this place when he fully understood and when he comprehended what was going on, the first thing Peter did was he went to the house of prayer. That's the first thing Peter did. Once he understood, and the verse 12 says the first thing he did, he went to a place where they were calling on the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's where Mary house were, where they were praying. Mm -hmm. yeah, if right. nothing else we should do, uh -huh. we should go to the house of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Right. Because, because not of what he's doing for us now, it's because what he was doing when we were out there. Uh -huh. All right. 
what he was doing for us then. Yeah. I'm here because he brought me out. Right. You're here because he brought you out. Yeah. Since we are all out, we might as well come into the house of the Lord. Amen. Right. Right. And not only did Peter went to the house of prayer. When Peter, after he was at the house of prayer, Peter did another thing. Yeah. Peter knocked on the gate. And if I read if I read my Bible correctly, they didn't say that he knocked on the door of the house. He knocked on the door of the gate. And when he knocked on the door of the gate, there was only one person that heard that knock. Yeah. It was a person that they call a decimal. And her name was Rhonda. Rhoda, I mean, her name was Rhoda. And Rhoda was the only one that heard that knock. And this, can you imagine, he wasn't at the door, he was at the gate. And that sound must have carried so far to that door that she heard that knock. And, but she was called a decimal. And the decimal, as, as I recall, studying, is a maid servant, a young female servant who was in charge of the door. Mm -hmm. And when Peter knocked on that door, and she's the only one, like I say, she recognized Peter's voice when she went to the door. She, when she went to the door, she was so excited, she forgot to, even, to open the door. She was just that excited. She ran and told the other people that Peter is at the door. And their response was, you mad. And what this mad means is, you you out of your mind. You crazy. Peter, you out of, out of your mind, you crazy. So, but if I came and told you, come on, Jesus, come on now, tell you what you've been praying for, it's right out there at the door, and you tell me, that I'm crazy, which one of us is really crazy? Right. Right. Some, sometimes some of us can be so spiritually, Come on. Okay. we miss Come on. when God sends a blessing. All right. All right. All right. While you're down on your knees, God already answered. All right. All right. Get up and start answering and, and respond. Respond to, to the answer. Come on now. Don't allow your spirit, spiritual self make you miss God's knocking at the door. All right. They missed God's response because they didn't believe the message. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's good. That's good. Rhoda, message was right. Because what they've been praying for was right at the door. Right, right. Because of who she was, she was a young female servant, and her voice wasn't trusted. You know, sometimes we got to. We, we got, sometimes God will test us. He'll test our faith by sending the answer through someone that we don't even accept. We can't tell God how to bless us. We have to get past how a person look, how a person act, because God uses anybody. Why would they, these people say that Rhoda was mad and out of her mind? Because if she, if, if they were praying for Peter's deliverance, they wouldn't have right, even right, said right, that she was insane. Right, right. Whatever you're praying for, expect it. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They told on their own self how they really felt about the world. They told on themselves. I got the word from God. Peter's at the door, and you call me crazy. Don't worry about what other people say. When God starts using you, you will see how people really feel about you. When God put an assignment on you, people going to always know they can't seem to handle it. They start seeing you in a negative light because God put an assignment on you. Yeah. Now, as long as you do doing what they want you to do, you're not crazy. No. But as soon as you start speaking the message of God and has given you has given you now you're crazy. <laughs> because you didn't hear what she heard and when and you wasn't at the door and you you didn't hear the knocking, you didn't hear the voice, but I'm crazy. 
which one of us is working in real faith? Huh. Right. And then in verse 15, they said it was an angel at the door. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it was an angel at the door, since, the, since, uh, since when has uh, it been a problem for an angel to get through the door? They don't have to break in. All they got to do is walk in. Yeah. Because the God I serve can't be blocked by a door. Yeah. Yeah. While they were in, in there debating who was at the door, Peter kept on knocking. Yeah. And while he was knocking, he wasn't aware he was being rejected on the other side. All right. All right. I believe they were struggling with him being at the door because they were keeping him where he was. Yeah. And do you know we have some people in our life they can't handle where we, uh, us because they're trying to keep us where we was. But they don't, but they won't hear go to the door. All right. It's really Peter. But Peter keeps knocking and they finally went to the door. Yeah. Because Peter kept on knocking. Yeah. All right. All right. And for those faith knockers, they haven't opened the door for you yet. But you keep on knocking. Yeah. And I know there's opportunity on the other side. I'm yeah. going to keep on knocking. Right. This door, yeah. the door not going to stop knocking until I get my answer. All right. For all the faith knocking, the knockers, they might try to push you from a job, now, but yeah. you keep on knocking. Nah. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. try to run you away from church, but you keep on knocking. Nah. Nah. Yeah. There's opportunity on the other side of that door, and somebody going to answer. Yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. allow that, that closed door make you stop knocking. Yeah. 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 Sometimes yeah. God yeah. will yeah. put yeah. a closed door in your face yeah. Yeah. to stretch your faith. Yeah. 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 Peter kept yeah. Faith, he had a faith that wouldn't quit. He had a prayer that wouldn't stop. And he had a praise that wouldn't shut up. He had a hallelujah that kept on shouting. God would not only deliver you, he would cover you. In verse 16, when they said, Peter said, hold. Hold up. Let me tell you my testimony. He told them about the exit out of the prison. He was told to get up. Put my shoes on. Put my clothes on. And let's go. And you know I just told you God would not only deliver you. But he will cover you too. In verse 18. The gods was was trying to figure out what happened to Peter. Where was Peter? How did Peter get out of here? But don't that, but don't that sound like what, what happened on one Friday night on yeah, Calvary? Yeah. But, Peter, but Peter, he was in a dark place overnight before it was light. And he went to a house where people were bound to get them free. Yeah. And on that same thing that happened on Calvary on a Friday night yeah. when Jesus died, mm -hmm. yeah. they killed Jesus there. Yeah. But early, yeah. on the Thursday morning, yeah. he got up yeah. before the break of day. Yeah. Jesus, get out of a dark place. Go back. Yeah, no. To set the people free that have been bound in sin. Yeah. Jesus got up yeah. and he set us free. Yeah. No longer bound yeah. in no sinful world. Yeah. Did he get up?
pray what you've been praying to God for. Amen. When an opportunity presents itself, you just keep pressing and keep pressing. Amen. So we thank her. Amen. For God just according to her to bring us the word to just encourage us. Amen. Just to keep pushing. Keep going just a little while. Amen. We thank God for all of y'all that came out on tonight. Amen. We thank all the ones that attended service online. Amen. We thank you for just the prayers. Amen. And the encouragement. Amen. I thank Brother Aaron for coming from Amen. For the in order to come out and be with us on today. Amen. The choir. Amen. Amen. To all of us that have showed up on tonight. I thank God for your faithfulness. Amen. In, in spite of. Amen. We thank God. So if there's nothing else, we're going to bring next week. That's right. We don't want to forget about we having movie night right in here on next Wednesday night. I don't know what the movie going to be. But it's going to be a religious movie and something that we can talk about. And just have a good time with it, all right? Amen. So to you all out on, on, on the internet, just come on out with us on next Wednesday here at 7 o'clock. Hopefully it's not raining. Amen. But we just want to come here have a good time. Amen. All right. So this is just the first of many more to come for the remaining of the year. So we bring the speaker back and she will give us our benediction. Amen. Amen. Y'all know I just I just had to share this with y'all. I just got a funny text from my auntie in Dallas. She was online watching. Her and my uncle. And she said, you know what, niece, you know you're a teacher, but where you get that end of it, that end of your swag from? <laughs> I said, it had to be the Lord. I said, I don't even know I had a swag <laughs> Amen. I thank God for the teaching tonight. I thank that I'm able to teach. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your everlasting love, Lord God. Thank you for allowing us traveling grace, Lord God. Thank you just allowing us together once more again in your name, Heavenly Father. And we pray tonight, Lord, that the words that I spoke, Lord, Father God, they, they were words of you, you, Lord, that helped somebody. Lord, if I said anything that was not of you, Lord, I ask you to forgive me, Heavenly Father. And Father, I pray for each and every one that, that came out tonight, and I thank them, Lord, and I pray that on their way home, that they will get back safely to their homes, and so when they get there, their homes will be intact, Lord God. Father, we give you the honor and we give you the praise in the name of Jesus. Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things in through Christ. I can do all things in through Christ. Our, mo our motto, I'm a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Which makes me a child of the Lord. Of living God. And my responsibility to God is tell the entire world about Him. I will go out and do my part. 